always begin this class the same way. Just standing in shoulder width posture. So when we stand with our feet together, that's more or less hip width. And then we open our feet out to shoulder width. So the outside of the foot is parallel with the outside of the shoulder. That gives us a nice, wide, gentle stance. Soften the knees slightly, straighten the back, tuck the chin in. And we just let the arms hang down by our sides. From here, we're just going to turn from the belly. So focusing everything down into the belly, just thinking about your belly button for a moment, thinking about going deeper inside until, if you imagine a sort of journey from your belly button inwards, you'd kind of bump into the front of your spine. That area just in front of the spine is the area we're thinking of. We're putting our mind in. And we're just going to turn from that area, let the spine turn, let the whole body turn, stretch and look back over the shoulder. Do the same on the other side, stretch and open and up back over the shoulder and then just do that a couple of times see how the back feels see how the spine feels then just release and let everything start to turn we let the hands softly tap onto the sides of the body we let the hands tap onto the small of the back we let the hands tap onto the belly button palms gently slapping the sides of the body Send a gentle vibration through the core of you. As Nikola Tesla says, if you want to understand the universe, look no further than vibration. He adds a few other things in there as well, but that's key for us, this idea that as we tap, we can make this vibration. So we can let that vibration go through our bellies. If you think about the position of the diaphragm, then the diaphragm is like a, a drum skin drawn taut across uh, from the front to the back of the, the body, attached to various bones and so forth. And as we tap onto the body, it's like beating a drum, really. We get this kind of vibration going through the body. The idea is that the chi in your body starts to respond to these vibrations. And so if you've been, um, you know, well, uh, the, the point I always make is that when we're asleep, we tend to, all the chi in the body tends to kind of slow down and stop moving so much. It kind of pools in the big muscles. Along with the blood, that's something just, I don't know, that's just come to mind. Who knows, that might be a useful thing to, to mention for somebody who's watching or listening, that uh, one of my teachers said, um, it's always a good idea just to sit on the edge of your bed for a few minutes. And so this has been my practice for many years. So you wake up and you just sit on the edge of the bed for a few minutes and just think about your day. You don't leap out of bed. And so I'm just aware of that when I was uh, working in the city many years ago. It would be my habit, you know, the alarm would go off and I'd bounce out of bed and I'd, you know, be about my day in a moment. But he sort of said, this is really important. You just sit up and you gently collect your thoughts and you make your gentle plans for the day. And then you get up and you start to do whatever. And hopefully the first thing you do is a Qigong set. And that was always the way it used to work for me was that I would just get out of bed and do, you know, 20 minutes of Qigong before I did anything at all. But it was pointed out to me that there's this crucial moment that apparently most strokes take place at something like, you know, 7.24 is the average time for a stroke in the morning. And I think there's something to do with the fact that people just bounce out of bed and you don't actually give the blood and the chi enough time to get moving. And so this is the idea is that when you, you know, if your alarm goes off or when you normally wake up, you just sit on the edge of the bed and you just kind of organize yourselves for a few moments. And that allows the blood to go up into your brain as well. It allows the chi to start moving around the body. And then we do these exercises. And hopefully that will be your new structure of your day is to get up and get the chi and blood moving better as well. 
So just for a moment before you get out of bed, just sit on the edge of the bed and think about your day. Just organize your thoughts, set your intentions, say some positive things to yourself about life, about the day, and then set off on your journey. And as I say, with an added codicil, please try and make that next step <clears throat> you going off to do some uh, Qigong exercises. So I always say to my students, don't even switch on a light. Don't talk to your partner. Don't even look at a phone. You know, don't turn on the telly. Don't even switch the kettle on. Just get out of your, well, sit on the side of the bed, organize yourself, get up, do 20 minutes of Qigong, and then it's done. If you have time, do more. If you don't have time, you get your day going. But it's a fantastic way to start your life, start your day. And so for me, that was one of the things that really, really changed my life. I had this hectic city job that was so stressful. It was unbelievable. And then I started incorporating Cheneng Qigong. No, started incorporating this exercise, specifically this very exercise, into my daily life. And uh, things started to change. I started to go to work and think, oh, things aren't bothering me anymore. I don't care what these people say. I don't care what those people think. You know, I think I'm feeling fine. I'm feeling awake. And it was a great way to change everything just to get the chi flowing. And as soon as I did that and I got in touch with my body and I started to listen to myself more clearly, everything in my life shifted. So there it is. That's the, a ringing endorsement for this exercise. Let's move on to the second part of it. So we get warmed up by doing this first part. Then we slow down a little bit. But now we're going to stretch further. So look back over your shoulders, really open the whole thing up. Use your neck as well. I had a few thoughts about why do our standing meditation? Well, just to tell you about standing meditation, the idea about it, and it doesn't really matter, you know, you stand for as long as you can during this class. If you need to sit down, that's fine. If you need to lie down, you know, do whatever works for yourself, do whatever works for your body. But why would we do this in the first place? Well, clearly the class is generally sort of packed with, you know, healing visualizations, ways to make yourself feel better and ways to start changing the patterns in your head, start to change the way you think about life. But there's more to it than that. It's the actual standing that's important. When do you stop in your daily life? So I think that's the really big question. You know, daily life, just by that suggests the round of things that we have to do. You know, the children, the breakfast, the lunch, the dinner, the family, the uh, work, the you know tasks that need to be, the bills, the whatever it might be. Everything, you know, every day has something, a shape. We need to, you know, find uh, things to fill our day with sometimes. You know, sometimes I'm fascinated by the amount of people who do crosswords and Sudoku and things like that, you know, uh, reading multiple books. The fact is that those are kind of things to fill your day. And so from my perspective, I would fill my day with Qigong. The whole point about it is that, you know, we need uh, to keep ourselves busy. And somehow there's this kind of idea that, yeah, you know, just to occupy your mind, well, I'd like you to occupy your mind with things that are positive. I'd like you to occupy your mind with things that are useful. I'd like you to occupy your mind with 
Nothing is what I'd really like you to occupy your mind with. And so it's very rare that we stop completely. It's very rare that we just really bring ourselves into absolute silence and stillness. It's very rare that we clear our mind out and just have time allowing the body to heal. So this is what our Wednesday class does. It brings us back to ourselves, puts us back in our bodies, brings us back to a quiet state. And just by standing, knees bent, tailbone tucked, nice long spine, you're also gathering vast quantities of chi into your body. So this hour is where we heal ourselves. And that's why all of these classes are online, so that you can do this hour whenever you need to do this hour. There are plenty more classes to pick on, to, uh, to pick out and uh, to enjoy. Okay, let's let this exercise slow to a stop. Gently, gently, slowly, slowly, bit by bit, bit by bit, it comes to a stop. So good. Gather chi, lift chi up. Gently pour this energy down through your body. Really relax. So the target for this is the belly, lower dan tian. We just tend to, we tend to let the hands sort of flow and go down. But what we're doing here is we're lifting the energy up from the earth. We're lifting the energy up from the heavens. The two of them sort of mix in a beautiful ball of chi above your head. You pour that down through the crown of your head. And then allow it to percolate through your brain. You pour it down through your throat. Allow it to percolate deep into the center of your chest. Pour it down all the way into the belly to this point we're thinking of behind the belly button. And just for a moment, we kind of just even a split second, we're just thinking chi deep in the belly here. And then when the hands release, it just flows back down the legs, creating a beautiful circuit. So you don't necessarily stop in front of lower dantian, but you just check it off if you like. So lifting chi up, earth chi, heaven chi, a perfect balance of yin and yang energy. Whatever your body needs is drawn down through the head, where the head stores some, drawn down through the chest, where the chest stores some from the organs, drawn deep into the belly, where it's stored for your whole body, and then relaxing and continues back as a perfect circuit back into the earth. So normally two or three of those, three is enough. But if you still feel a bit lightheaded, then just keep going with it. It doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. You know, you can do this 10, 20 times till you feel calm, settled and relaxed. The only thing I would say is if you have low blood pressure, don't go too strong on it because you can actually lower your blood pressure to such a degree, you can actually make yourself sort of, you know, faint. I've had that once and uh, so I don't want you to faint. Okay, so... In this little warm-up package, we also have uh, a back bend, uh, back and forward bend. And all we're going to do with that is just um, take this lift up again, as we've just done. Take the hands up above the head. And when they're up here, let's just open the chest up. So we're stretching from our breastbone to our fingertips. Just gently leaning back and letting that open. Up into the blue sky and then gently back. Up into the blue sky, gently back. Up and gently back. Okay, so what we try and do is coordinate our arms and our ears together. Just tip over the arms and the ears. When the arms get to parallel, then we start to bend our upper back, start to bend the middle back, start to bend the lower back. Keep your knees soft, that's fine. Drift your way down and let the body gently hang. So as we hang here, the back of the neck is right, nice and relaxed. We're just letting the back of the neck soften. So kind of the top of the head is pointing down towards the ground. Knees are soft, back is relaxed. It doesn't really matter how far down you go. It's just go down as far as you feel comfortable, but just take the tension off your neck. Okay, then we're just going to stretch gently down towards our toes and release. Just imagine a line between the roots of your toes. Gently stretch towards that line. 
and released. Imagine a line that's been drawn between your insteps, gently stretch towards that line. As you can see, we get gradually deeper and release. And eventually heading back towards the heels, deep bend. And relax and release. Let the body hang. So to bring ourselves upright, we point the tailbone up into the blue sky behind. You'll feel your legs stretch a little bit. And then push the tailbone towards the front of the body. Start to roll the spine up, vertebra by vertebra by vertebra. And then gently bring ourselves up, 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 up into the blue sky. Drifting the knees and the hips forward, we softly lean back. Up. And gently back. Up. And back. Up. And back. Hands up in the blue sky. Arms and ears tip over first. So we're just working on the nape of the neck. Then we roll into the upper back. Then we roll into the middle back. Then we roll into the lower back. Knees stay soft, body hangs and relaxes down. Back of the neck is soft and relaxed. Extending gently towards the toes. And release. In line with the roots of our toes. Release. Towards our insteps. And release. Back towards our heels. Let the body just hang and relax. Tend to lift the tailbone up behind. Push the tailbone towards the front of the body. Roll the spine up. Head, arms and ears gently stretch up. Up, up, up into the blue sky. Softly let the knees and hips drift forward as you gently lean back, opening from your breastbone up to your fingertips. And up. Gently back. And up, back, and up, back, and up. Okay, stretch up into the blue sky. Try doing these exercises with your legs straight now. So just to give yourself an extra hamstring stretch. Arms and ears only. So that's just the nape of the neck bending over. When the arms are parallel to the floor, upper back, middle back, lower back. Roll your way down, back of the neck relaxes, body hangs, right? Tummy tucks in, extending towards your toes and release in line with the roots of your toes and release in line with your insteps. Release back towards your heels or as deep as you'd want to go. Great. Body hangs and relaxes. Lift the tailbone up behind. Push tailbone towards the front of the body. Roll the spine up. And then try and join up the arms and ears as one piece and bring that up. Just gives that extra kind of dynamic stretch as we come up straight. Knees and hips drifting forward. You lean back. Stretching up. Gently back. Up. Gently back. Up, gently back. Good, hands in the blue sky. We'll just do one last time with straight legs. So arms and ears tip over, body stays straight. Now the upper back starts to roll, middle back starts to roll, low back starts to roll. Sinking down, settling down, keeping the legs nice and straight. Body hangs and relaxes. Okay, so here we are, stretching gently down towards our toes, keeping the legs as straight as we can, and then release. In line with the roots of our toes, stretching down, keeping the legs as straight as possible, and release. In line with our insteps, and release. Back towards our heels, deep bend. Relax and release. Good, body hangs. Lift the tailbone up behind. Push the tailbone toward the front. 
roll the spine up, bring up the head and the arms and the ears as one go, stretching gently up into the blue sky. Knees and hips drift forward. You can gently lean back. Stretching up and gently back. Up and back. Up and back. Hands up in the blue sky. Just gently release the hands down. Let's gather chi. So we just put the hands in the earth and softly lift up a beautiful ball of chi. So it's interesting, in the old fashioned systems, we have yin and yang, so that's earth and heaven energy poured down through your body, drawing the energy. And of course, anything that the body needs, it'll keep from this. And anything that lets go of just gets washed out through the body, out. So we can both gather and fill, but we can also cleanse at the same time. But Dr. Pang, he says, our universe is made of Hunyuan Qi, which is entirety Qi, oneness Qi. And so we don't even have to think about Earth Qi and Heaven Qi. If you just think about the universe as a whole, gathering the universe's Qi and pouring it down through you, then everything that's required is encapsulated in this idea. Hunyuan Qi. Draw it down through your body. Pouring this vast universal chi through your body. Again, three times, normally enough. If you want to keep going, please do so. Otherwise, we just move on to our side bends. Just take your right hand up into the blue sky. Tip your right hand over to the left. Gentle breath in. Stretch left. Gentle breath in, stretch left. Breathing in, stretching left. Breathing in, stretching left. Take a breath in, bring the right hand up. As you breathe out, you swap hands over, right hand goes down, left hand comes up. Breathe in, stretch up. Gently over to the right. Breathe in. Go right. Breathe in. Stretch right. Breathe in. And stretch. Breathe in. Lift the left hand up. Swap the hands over as you breathe out. Breathe in, stretch up with the right. Tipping over. Pointing to the left. Breath in. Stretch to the left. Breathe in. Stretch left. Breathe in. And stretch. Breathe in. And stretch. Okay, breathe in, lift the right hand up. Swap hands over. Breathe in, lift the left hand up. And then over to the right. Breathe in. Stretch right. Breathe in. And right. Stretch. Breathe in. Stretch. Okay, breathe in with both hands up there. As you breathe out, gently bring your hands down. Okay, gathering. Pouring.
drawing all the focus to the belly and releasing the hands. Lift up. Everything is being drawn to the core of you, focusing deep into the core of you, bringing everything to store deep in the belly, lower Dantian, the lower energy field. Gathering. The more we build up this store of chi deep inside, the stronger, more powerful our body becomes. The stronger and more powerful our healing responses become. So we focus everything into the belly. And then let the hands relax. Let's actually bring the hands onto the belly now. So lift chi up. And pour chi down through your body. Drawing the chi down, focusing everything toward the belly. And then put the hands on the belly. So we have one palm on top of the other palm. The center of the palm lined up with the belly button. The centers, all of these three centers, the center of one hand, the center of the other hand, the center of the belly button, all lined up with lower dantian, the lower energy field. And that's all lined up with the Ming Men gate on the small of your back. So Ming Men gate, I think, is between L2 and L3 on your spine. It's a sort of gateway on the small of your on the small of your back, the lower back, where we open out. So we have the belly button at the front and directly opposite it, we have Ming Men Gate on the back. And in between them, we have this energy field, except that it's set a bit deeper into the body. It's not exactly 50% of the way in, it's about 70% of the way in. As I say, just as you bump into your spine, just in front is an area of high concentration of chi. So how are you going to visualize that? Perhaps it's like a pilot light glowing deep inside you, an ember. I don't know, some sort of nuclear reactor, some tiny little um, speck of light. Whatever it is, just imagine it deep inside there, gently growing, gently glowing, gently expanding. As we send more and more chi deep inside, lower dantian gets stronger and stronger, gets bigger and bigger. You can let it expand. Some people say they feel the entirety of their belly filled with chi. This kind of vast balloon of energy expanding deep in the core of you. So chi experiences are different for everybody. Nobody experiences them the same way. We get sort of common ideas. The idea that we can feel this area full, this area filled with chi. Sometimes it feels hot for people. Sometimes it feels cold. Sometimes it feels heavy. Sometimes it feels very light. All of these experiences are very perfect. And sometimes they change. One day you feel this, and the next day you feel something different. You think, oh, but sometimes the next day you don't feel anything at all. Where did it go? I lost my chi feeling. Don't worry. There's nothing you can do that will stop your chi from working. Your chi will always do what it needs to do. It's just a question of whether you can help it along a bit using your mind. So we have this ball of chi growing deep inside us, this beautiful energy. We can allow this energy to flow through our bodies to support the healing process. So we're constantly building lower dantian. Dr. Pang has a way of getting us into a a frame of mind that's really powerful. So Dr. Pang was the guy who founded Jinang Qigong in the 1970s, I suppose. Still alive now, he's in his late 80s. And he has written this beautiful eight lines. It's a standard kind of Chinese poemic form. Eight lines with four characters on each line. And it basically encapsulates all of the ideas of Shineng Qigong, all of the important aspects. So I'm going to sing it, sing it for you this morning, and then I'll translate it for you. So it goes like this. Dun. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Start again. 
in can be be song You might observe there are 10 lines in that. But there's actually the last line repeated three times just to give emphasis. What does it tell us? This most simple form, it says, imagine your feet connected deep into the earth. Imagine your head up in the blue sky. So first of all, this gives us this connection from inside the body out. And as I mentioned before, heaven and earth, we go beyond that. We think of universe. We think of the vastness of everything. We think that we can connect out. But also impl implicit in that is the outside connecting in. Chi from the heavens flow into you. Chi from the earth surges up into your body. Your hands on lower dantian. You can gather this chi, you can store it deep in your belly. You're plugged into the system, possibly for the first time, really plugged into the system. There's common people wandering around. We don't really know about this energy. We see things like Star Wars and they talk about the force. You know, we hear stories about martial artists or whatever it might be, we never used to think it's relevant to us. But now, in your Qigong practice, you find it's possible for you to plug yourself into the resources of the universe. Gather this incredible healing chi into your body. So we think about the feet connected down and the heavens connected up, but also the whole body connects. You've got a point on your third eye that connects and a matching one on the back of the head. You've got this point that you're holding with the belly button that connects and the one on the small of the back I was saying about. On the soles of the feet, underneath your arms, on the tops of your shoulders. your temples, there are acupuncture points all over your body that are opening up and connecting. If you've ever had an acupuncture treatment, you know how many needles they can stick in in very different you know, places of your body, all over your feet, all over your hands, all over your back. So there are 300 uh, standard recognized acupuncture points. They're like sort of minor versions of the ones that I've just been ticking off. So the ones we use in Qigong are like major gateways, but all the acupuncture points are like minor gateways. And then even more minor gateways, every pore on your skin. We also absorb Qi through our breath, through our nostrils, through our mouth. So your whole body has this ability to absorb this fantastic energy. 
Your body has the ability to let go of the things you no longer need. And that's only the first line of Dr. Pang's eight phrases. The next line says, let your body relax, let your mind expand. Well, it's an important thought because we never get anything done when we're stressed, we never get anything done when we're in tension. Sometimes just standing here is tension because we're just not used to it. But this becomes the antidote to the 21st century. We cultivate a habit of standing quietly because we've never been taught to do it before. I've just been brought to mind one of my ex-partners and I used to say, you know, you have to do Qigong. And she would say, no, I need to do something like dancing or boxer size or something. You know, she could never stay still. And I'd say, that is the reason you need to do Qigong, is to learn the discipline of staying quiet, standing still, just letting this healing be absorbed into your body. And so the second line of Dr. Pang's eight phrases, just relax. Terribly difficult when you say to someone, just relax. This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to keep our soft knees. We're trying to keep the tailbone gently tucked forward, just in front Hoi yin, it's just uh, in front of the tailbone. So it's between your genitalia and your anus. There's a sort of point there. And we just say lift hoi yin up. It's kind of like closing between your legs, kind of holding chi inside your body, almost as if you're sort of cosseting all this chi that we're building in our um, lower dantian. You can imagine this idea of sort of letting your arms hang down as if you're almost like holding a baby in your hands. It was like holding your chi and just so we close ho yin and that kind of like holds the chi inside. Let the body relax. Mind expand. So often we kind of think of ourselves in this kind of common people way. We just sort of think of ourselves as being trapped inside this body. This is who we are. But actually now, when we soften and start to do our qigong, we realize that it's actually not just inside the body, that the body connects everything outside as well. We start to feel the outside of the body. And so this is the next line, the third line says, no inside, no outside. It's a nice idea, isn't it? I always joke and sort of say, like a chi vegetable swimming in a chi soup. You know, you are part of this chi field. You're integral with it. So we just allow ourselves to dissolve into the chi round us. But of course, we allow the chi round us to dissolve into us too. No inside, no outside. Sometimes it's translated as quiet inside, quiet outside. That gives us a kind of an idea of what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to achieve a balance, outside world, inside world, no real difference. So then it starts to question the boundary of your skin. With your eyes shut, can you actually tell where your skin stops and where the chi starts? A bit more difficult. We don't feel like a harsh line drawn between us and the outside world, and that's because there is none. That's because we are part of the chi field, because we are absorbed into the chi field. So just be soft, be relaxed, be calm. Allow yourself to soften into the chi field. No difference outside or inside. So we can use our mind to scan through our body. Like a, a searchlight, use your mind like a searchlight and scan it through your neck, through your shoulders, through your arms. Is there anything that feels tight, feels blocked, feels difficult? Scan it through your chest, anything that stands out. 
scan it through your torso all the way down into your hips and your pelvis. Scan it down your legs, to your ankles, and your feet. And when we take this stock take, you know, check into our spine, check into our body, is there something that stands out to you? You might have some sort of diagnosis and it might be very obvious you think, you know, it's definitely this is what I want to work with. But then when you sort of scan through your body, you might think, hmm, something else is suggesting, you know, perhaps you're thinking about your um, kidneys, but in fact, actually what's being suggested to you is your stomach. And you sort of think, well, that's a bit weird. I don't really understand why. Why is my mind telling me that I should look after my stomach today? You know, when I know that the job I have to do is my kidneys. Well, the truth is your body knows far better than you do. So don't be swayed by a diagnosis or don't be swayed by, um, you know, something you've been told by a friend, whatever it might be. Really, really concentrate on finding what your body needs. And it might be as bizarre as working with your feet when you th should think you should be working with your head, <laughs> but your body knows better. So let's just listen to our body for a minute and see where it wants us to start. See this when where it wants us to do some healing. You can just let those problems gently dissolve. Thinking about the area that needs healing. Just let it open. Make some space. Let go of the problem. So when we start to make space inside our body, this is where we can get some real healing from. So one of the, the problems with our body is chi that's blocked. It's not flowing well. When qi blocks, it tends to create pain, but it also creates lumps and bumps and whatever it might be. And so if we feel a blockage, we can just concentrate our mind there and gently ask it to open. If something is broken, we can gently send healing and allow chi to flow through. If we've had some surgery of some sort, we can just gently rebuild using our minds. We can just think about that reconstructively. You can energetically rebuild whatever it was that's been damaged in any way, perhaps an accident. So when we start to think about the healing version of ourselves, we stop thinking about the actual problem. So if you have a broken arm, there's no point in saying to yourself, my broken arm, I'm going to heal it. Broken arm, I'm going to heal it. It's my arm is broken, I'm going to heal it. Because every time you repeat the fact that your hand is broken or your arm is broken, you're giving it more power. So what we do is, my broken arm, I'm going to heal it. And then from on, thenwards, onwards, we're saying, my arm is healed, beautiful arm, sending chi to it. Everything is working well. Everything is perfect. <laughs> so don't harp on about a problem. Just kind of like, you know, gloss over it. You can say once if you want to, just to kind of like uh, bring the focus to. And then after that, we just do complete healing. So think about your body. Think about where you want to work. Think about releasing and opening space. Think about letting go. Think about the problems you had in the past, gently dissolving. Out, out, out into the blue sky. So we go from scanning inside our body to find a problem, to releasing out of our body, letting go. Wu Wei. Wu Wei is a Chinese word. It's just that circle of life. Sometimes we see a painter who could just draw a beautiful, perfect circle freehand. That's Wu Wei. It shows emptiness. And that's what we're doing is releasing ourselves out, empty, open. 
But implicit in the idea of Wu Wei is the idea of not holding on, not grasping tightly. So what we're being asked to do here is not hold on to a diagnosis, not to hold on to somebody else's projected story of your illness, not to hold on to the Western paradigm of what gen generally happens, not to hold on to what Google tells you or what your friends and relatives have told you. Not to hold on to family stories. This happened to my grandmother, this happened to my mother. Not to hold on to any of those things. None of those are actually your story. What we're doing here is realizing that we can change our own personal story. So be careful how you think about your personal story. Release your personal story, the old one. Make space for a new story to evolve. They say, let go and let God. So now I release the fear behind it. Release the physicality of it. Release the energy pattern that's brought it about. Let go of your illness. Let go of whatever it is you don't need in your life. Let go. Open up. Expand. Let go. Let go. Let go. The final phrase of the eight phrases, Dr. Pang's beautiful poem, speaks of family. It speaks of your chi family. Because you now have a chi family supporting you. Family can bring about <laughs> some toxic ideas sometimes, can't it? Family can be sort of something you don't want. This time, your chi family is a different, this is an energetically different people. These are the people you do want in your life. These are the people you do want to support you. These are the people that have no side in the story at all. And when you put your mind into this space, when we connect as a class like this, and in Jineng Chigung, we say, no time, no space. Literally, no time, no space. Because our minds connect at a far deeper level than that. So whether you're doing this class live with me now, or whether you do it again in a week's time, we still connect in this wider, vast network. Millions upon millions of Qigong practitioners across the globe who are doing exactly the same thing as you right now. Connect in this beautiful space, supporting each other, bringing good information to the Qi field. So you may have problems with your legs, but somebody in the chi field has got the perfect working leg information for you. That person might have a problem with their heart, but you have the perfect heart information for them. So it's like a vast library of healing out in the information layer of our universe. 
feel your ability to connect. Feel your ability to absorb the information you need into your body. It's like a vast reprogramming. It's like downloading the latest update. It's like letting your body gather new information in every cell. And whereas yesterday your cells were doing something bizarre you didn't want them to do, today suddenly new information. Suddenly they've got the new idea, they've got the new program. Suddenly they can change. Suddenly they can shift and start doing something different. Your cells suddenly get the message. Ah, oh, we don't want to do this anymore. We want to do that. Okay, let's do it. And everything starts to shift and change in your body. So deep in the eight phrases that Dr. Pang has created for us, this vast information, the functioning of the entirety of the universe lies inside his eight phrases. The healing tool for all of us lies inside the eight phrases. Just feel your ability to dissolve, let go. So generally, when we do that, we just open and close our hands. When you open your hands, you can imagine all the problems dissolving out into the blue sky. When you draw your hands towards each other, you can imagine healing chi flowing into your body. So where you open and close your hands is up to you. You don't even have to open and close them. Sometimes, you know, when you're lying sick in bed, you just can't even move your hands. It doesn't really matter because all we're doing is just imagining expanding out into the universe. And all we're doing is imagining bringing the vast healing essence of the universe back into our bodies. When we open the hands, we let go of all the stuff we no longer need. When we gather, it comes back in healing into our bodies. So we just do this little la chi exercise. Often just do it quietly when we're standing. Don't even have to say kai. Don't even have to say uh. Just moving the hands is enough just to keep the energy flowing and moving and opening. So the last thing to think about today is your relationship to everything around you. So I read a phrase once that said, the source of all suffering in the universe is just to not know that you are God. That's a pretty big statement. Just not knowing you are God makes everything suffering. But it's pretty much the essence of most kind of teaching. If we look at the Bible, if you look at the Quran, if you look at all these books, we find that there are passages there that say that God is inside you. That you are the universe. But then we have this kind of forgetting. You can't have forgetting without remembering. The two of them need to be two halves, yin and yang. And so we have this idea that when we're sort of born into this world, we just kind of forget about our divinity. We forget about this divine spark that sits inside of us. We just get this idea that we're separate, we're lost souls, we're little sheep. <laughs> we need you know, to be gathered back, whatever it is, whatever the story might be. But the reality of it is that you have always been divine. You are extraordinary, incredible. You are the creator of the entire universe. But all of our problems stem from having forgotten our true nature, having forgotten that we are God. And so here we are in this 
story that we've chosen to play. And as Shakespeare would have it, the outrageous slings and arrows of misfortune seem to visit us every single day. Oh my, how do we end up in this situation? Well, life just does life. It all depends on how you respond. If you're constantly fighting against life, if you feel that you know best and that imposing your order on life is the only way, then you're going to be disappointed again and again. How many times have you thought to yourself, that person should know better, that person should do better, that person should, well, there's a thousand kind of versions of that. But it's your expectation that's not being met. That's the problem. You set targets. And let's be honest, Sometimes they're targets that you fail at miserably yourself, but you set the target high for other people. I think we can all be, um, we can all be accused of that. Or we can all see that in ourselves. Other people should do much better, and then you let yourself off incredibly easily. But that's it. We set our targets so high for expectation. And other people can then only let us down. I expected the world to be better than it was. <laughs> and then it turned out not to be. You can only disappoint and upset yourself. There's only one person you can change. And that's you. And so this is where we work today. We make changes in ourselves. So we look at patterns that drive us. Something that always upsets us. Something that's guaranteed to set us off. Maybe it might be um, a meeting with your sister, with your mother, with your, you know, father, whatever it might be. And you just think to yourself, oh, no, I know that's going to happen. I know it's going to be an argument. I know all of these things. That's because you have a set of expectations. The other person has a set of expectations. And they rarely match. So how can you change things? You can't possibly change the other person. The only thing you can do is change you. And perhaps you think, and maybe justifiably, I don't need to change. I'm the one who's right. You know, there's always one tiny, tiny drop of um, I want to say proof, not proof, not guilt. There's one tiny drop of complicity, perhaps is the word I'm looking for. You know, you always have some part of the problem in yourself. So you have to work with yourself. You have to change yourself because you cannot ever change other people. And so when we do this, we think about ourselves. And it's time to think about ourselves kindly. Think about the relationship between you and one person in particular. You always stand on your moral principles. They stand on theirs. And you might as well be two islands in the middle of a river, miles from each other. So now the only thing to be done is for you to change 
the way you feel about yourself. Soften the edges, dissolve the problems, let go. Gather back new energy into your story. So when you see the connection between you and that other person, just let it dissolve. Let their energy go back to them. You bring your energy back to you. It's like a reset. You can give them back everything of theirs. You can take back everything of yours. And then you can look at your stuff. In my head, I'm doing sort of air quotes. <laughs> I'm sure you know your stuff. Why not soften it and dissolve it? Why not just let go of the beliefs you've held on to for such a long time about you and this person? Why not let go of the kind of foundation issues that have always been there between you and them? Why not forgive those problems? You don't have to attribute that to anybody in particular. You don't have to say, I'm forgiving them because they're always wrong. You know, you just acknowledge the fact that you're both complicit in this. And when you bring your hands apart, you can just dissolve those problems between the two of you. And when you bring your hands back together again, you can just see a ball of light between the two of you starting to glow. So let's just think about this very kind of visual idea. Letting go of all the problems, breaking the strands, let's say, of things that have bound you together. And in its place, just put a ball of love. Doesn't matter what it looks like. Just imagine between you and this person, this glowing ball of chi. Deep inside it, love. Fill that with love. You might want to reinforce this chi ball every day before you see the person next, before you speak to them. Perhaps you can gather the universe's resources so we can open our hands out and imagine the vastness of the whole universe and then we can bring them back together and draw them down into this beautiful chi ball. Open up and let all of the problems between the two of you go. You can feel the vastness of the universe how far do you want to open your arms? It's up to you. You could open them up as wide as wide can be and then gather back the resources of the universe into this chi ball to make this healing space between the two of you. Perhaps you can do the same for yourself. When you open up your hands, why not dissolve all of your problems? Just let them go as vast as you can out into the four corners of the universe. And then when you bring your hands back, you gather back this incredible healing chi pouring back into your body to rebuild, reshape, remake your body from a physical and energetic perspective. Why not do that a few more times? Just really expand out into the universe. Just make the whole of the universe yours. When you gather back, you're bringing back this incredible healing for you also, you can bring back healing for this other person as well. So why not? Let's do that. Let's open our hands up, expand out into the universe, and then bring back a vast healing for this other person. Pour chi into their lives. Pour healing into their lives. Pour love into their lives. You don't even have to know what to heal. Just open the hands out into the blue sky. You don't have to know what their problems are. You don't have to know anything about them. Just pour this healing love deep into their lives. Fill their lives with this incredible healing universal energy. And then we can just go back, a little small ball in front of us. So now we can survey the scene. Just imagine this other person. They've received all this healing energy. Fortunately, their body knows exactly how to employ it. You don't know, you don't need to know what it is that they need to fill their body with. Just the fact that you've sent healing love to them is all that really matters. We pour this healing love deep inside their lives. So with this vast ball of healing energy, they can do whatever they wish. 
with their energy. It'll just populate every cell in their bodies and it'll change and shift things for them. You've brought back this vast healing energy for yourself. You've filled every cell in your body with this incredible gene. And so your body sets to work, changing things inside you. But also now, we've created this vast love bubble between us and them. So at any time we react, we're reacting through this new filter. Now, let me say that again. Anytime we interact with them, we're interacting through this new filter that we've created, through this new, beautiful, who knows, rose-colored lens, as it were, to this incredible filter of chi and love between us. So that will also change the dynamic. So whatever it was that created an issue, just let that go. Because we realize that nobody will ever meet our standards, including ourselves. Just let that go. Be easy about it. That's fine. You just have to remind yourself that you're doing the best you can with the resources you have. So at any moment, you are doing the best you can with the resources you have. But that is also true of the person you're interacting with. They're doing the very best they can with the resources they have. And as we know, that may not meet your expectations, but that is the best they can manage. So we forgive and we forget. We stay soft and open. We don't cling on to results. We don't hold on to any results. We just keep the fluid soft, relaxed, the situation fluid and open. We just allow everything to be soft and open. So just think about the ceiling between you and someone else. You've changed yourself. You've moved and shifted things at the deepest level of your being. You've sent them unconditional love. How can that be wrong? They can do with whatever they wish with this energy. And you've created a new space to work in, to bring about better interactions between you. Just remember that this process takes time, sometimes instantaneous change. You can't even quite believe the way the person has changed. Sometimes it takes longer, it's slow, bit by bit, but now, We've released expectation. Expectation creates suffering. Just release that expectation and you'll have no suffering. It just is what it is. Life doing life. And now you are swimming with the river, not against it. So place yourself in the flow of the river. Just allow life to take you. Just drift with it. Smile on your face. Just imagine you're floating down this big benign river now. Perhaps you're on a lie low, lying there in the sun, gently relaxing. Just flowing with life. Happy, big smile on your face. When you rest and relax, your body starts to heal. Everything starts to change inside you. Bring about this vast healing to your body. Gather this healing chi. Allow it to percolate through every cell of your body. Just know that you can create a perfect healing. So perhaps we want to start to bring ourselves back to Lower Dantian. 
wherever your hands have drifted off to, perhaps we could gather a few more times. So why not just plug your hands into the earth and lift a ball of chi up? Gather the chi gently down through your body and pour it to your belly. Really feel the chi go deep inside. Gentle lifting, gentle gathering. Easy pouring. The resources of the universe at your fingertips. Vast, vast, powerful chi being poured through your body, healing, healing, healing at the deepest of levels. And then we can bring our hands to our belly. So next time we gather, we can lift you up. And just pour it down through our bodies. And we can just bring it to rest on our bellies. Mm. Hold this vast field of chi deep inside you, this wonderful healing energy in your core. All function of your body is returning to perfect working order. Just feel that you can hold this beautiful energy deep inside you. So we bring ourselves to closing. We have to bring ourselves back into our physical bodies. When we spend time out in the universe, wandering through the vast fields of chi, we have to remember this physical body lives in this physical life. So after having brought all this incredible healing energy back in, we start to kind of bring our minds, bring ourselves, bring our souls, bring our spirit, whatever it is, back deep inside the body. And we can do that by turning some circles round lower than Tien. So you can gently turn a circle round the belly button. Go three times anti-clockwise. Well, I tend to go anti-clockwise first. It doesn't really matter if you're going the other way. It's just a habit. And then send three circles in the opposite direction. So the first three kind of bring you back into your body, center all the chi into lower dantian. And the second three circles just kind of remind your body back into this physicality here and now, um, body, yeah, back into your daily mode, as it were, back into real life, whatever that might be. Here we are now in our physicality. As we stand here, sit, lie, we can just imagine the Wei Chi layer. So your Wei Chi layer is about an inch or two, three or four centimeters around your skin. It's like a glowing field of Chi, a protective shield, keeps you safe. This fantastic field of energy, your Wei Chi layer. Protective, strong, powerful, glowing. And then around that, you can imagine your Chi body a meter above you, below you, in front, back, left, right, a beautiful bubble of chi. And just see yourself inside these wonderful fields of energy, a being of light, every cell in your body working well, all functions of your body working well, all functions of your body returning to perfect working order, all functions of your body normal, all functions normal. See yourself as a being of light. Every cell lit from within. Chi filling your body. Put a big smile on your face. Slowly open your eyes. Oh, gently let the hands down, start to move the fingers, start to move the toes. We can get a bit of movement back into the body. So if you unmute yourself, you're likely to turn up on this YouTube video. So if you want to stay unmuted, that's fine. But we always say how la at the end. So how la means good already. Everything is fixed. Everything is sorted. 
um, it just is kind of like an affirmation that says that all of the work we've done is kind of like fixed now. So how la means good already in Chinese. And my Chinese teachers say, first time you say how la, just think about how la, everything good for you. Second one, how la, everything good for your family and your friends and your sort of, you know, close circle. And the third how la is just for everyone. Happiness, joy, everything is great, everything working well. I'll count one, two, we put our hands up and we shout how la. So hands up in the air. One, two, ha, la. One, two, ha, la. Last time. One, two, ha, la. Oh, very good. Lovely. All right, we have a little salute for each other. So your right hand comes up, left hand goes down. You pull the fingers together. 